Hello and welcome to another How to Play StarCraft 2 unit guide. In this guide we will be going through every single unit in the game and going over their strengths, their weaknesses, some of their abilities and this time, something new, their matchup specific uses. And in this video we will be talking about the Immortal. Now the story of the Immortal actually begins with its predecessor, now we're going to do something a bit new. Its predecessor, the Dragoon. Now if you didn't play Brood War, you actually might want to consider doing so. You can get it completely free from Blizzard. See? Play for free. You don't see that every day. Now if you want better graphics, you can get remastered. I'll leave a link down, down below. Now, anyway, the Dragoon itself. This is a Legacy of the Void rendition of the same unit. Now, it had a similar role to the Stalker. It could move and shoot in contrast to the Zealot, which was still a melee warrior. It was a golden robotic walker. Now, its role in StarCraft II was fulfilled by the Stalker, which we have already covered. Blizzard still wanted a... Blizzard still wanted a golden robotic walker of some kind. And hence, Fashion the Immortal. Now, by the way, if you happen to play Overwatch, there's actually a skin for Orisa that's based on the Immortal. So, notice the golden colors, the headpiece, the cannon is to Orisha's cannon, but if we take a look back at our Immortal, it looks pretty similar. See, so if you look at the Immortal, you can notice that the headpiece is the, is the same that you see on Orisa. Okay, so let's talk about its in-game lore. So a little bit of story time here. Now, for the Dragoon, the ones that I just displayed. So what those are, are those were a robotic warrior? A robotic const walker, rather, housing a wounded Templar, but mostly Kalai warrior, too injured to fight in the traditional sense. Now, if you play or know Warhammer 40k, this is effectively a Protoss Dreadnought. And these are venerated warriors who are in turned into machines to continue serving. And there were many back in... There were many back during the First Great War, the most famous of them being none other than Phoenix from Heroes of the Storm, if you, if you play that game. You can thank a Hydralisk for that, actually. So yes, this is Phoenix, and he's a Dragoon, because he lost a fight to a Hydralisk. Anyway, that's uh, Brood War stuff. However, however, after the fall of Aya during the First Great War, Aya was the Protoss homeworld to the Zerg, a lot of Protoss died. According to the wiki, some 7 out of 10 were killed, and after that, any Protoss who were wounded in such a state but still wanted to serve were put in these upgraded, newer, tougher, immortal exoskeletons. So actually, if you look at their profile, it's actually a... It's actually a Protoss in this... in this liquid stasis, stasis bath. So that they can still serve their, their race. So that's the kind of grim law behind the immortal. Okay, so let's talk about where they're produced from. They're produced from the robotics facility, so let's go over that. Okay, so to get an immortal, first you have to get a pylon, of course. Then you have to get a gateway. Then you have to get a cyber core. So far, looking good. Now, this is where the divergence comes in. If you notice, you can't get an immortal from here. You need to then get it from the robotics facility. Then you can produce immortals. So if you're playing on the default hotkeys, the buttons are B, E for pylon, then B, G for gateway, B, Y for cybernetics core, and finally V, R for the robotics facility. Then you can make them. Unlike all the units we've covered so far, these cannot be warped in, so wherever you build your robotics facility is going to be the place that the immortals are going to be coming out one at a time in, in the real game. Now. Now, let's talk about the, where you get the upgrades from, and like all other units prior to this, you get your upgrades from the Forge. 
So if we take a look at these immortals, let's build the forge right here. Okay, right now the immortal is at uh, zero zero zero. If we upgrade them, upgrade. complete. Upgrade. There, done. So that's what they get their upgrades from. Okay, let's clear the board. Let's clear the board. And reset the upgrades real quick. They're gonna mess up the examples later if we don't. Okay, so the Immortal has one key ability, and that is something called Barriers. If you look at the older games, sometimes it's called uh, Hardened Barriers. But now it's just called Barrier. Hardened Barriers actually used to be a little bit different. So this is a passive ability. And it absorbs 100 damage and lasts for 2 seconds. So what this really means is that when it's attacked, it has this additional shield on top of its existing shields. We'll get to that in its strength section, but this allows the immortal, as James Raider put it, to shog off a siege tank shot, and they can. Now I'll get into a specific example for that a little bit later. Okay, so let's talk about some of the strengths of the immortal. Now the first clear strength it has is anti-armor. This is really important. Let's get three, a trio of immortals. And let's call, let's get some eight stalkers. Now here's the thing. An immortal will do 20 damage against a normal target, but it will do 50 damage against an armored target. So the immortal itself is armored, but so are things like stalkers at every single building in the game. So these are specifically designed to punch through armor, be it Terran Steel, Protoss Ally, or Zerg Carapaces. Okay, so you'll notice that once the shields are down, they will just shred through these stalkers. This is why Immortals are so important in PvP, we'll get to that towards the end. And they're all gonna die. Yep. So if we look with the at Carapace. Okay, roughly the equivalent. Yeah, about there. So this is 12 roaches against the Immortals. Yeah, they have no shield, so they're just gonna die. The hardened bear is also helping out. Easy victory. And for the Terran side, speak of siege tanks. So if we siege them, attack at the same time. Do you think the siege tank's powerful compared to these guys? Notice how quickly the health goes away once uh, the Immortal gets within range. So they easily counter just about all armored units. There are some which have very high armor, which are a bit tougher, but the Immortal will punch through it. So that's the first strength. Now, the next strength is its tank here. This is where that barrier comes into play. Now, it's kind of hard to demonstrate its ability because often in combat, it's hard to see. But I do have an example. Now, now we'll get to the battle cruiser in its own video, but I want to demonstrate this because now Yamato has a blast which does two, that does 240 damage for every, for a single shot. So, if we fire it at an Immortal... Okay, you'll notice that the Immortal 100 shields it down to 60 HP. That's surely what will happen. Now, notice that it's important because the barrier was not actually triggered. However, if we run a counter example... Okay, let's see if I can do this correctly. We can attack. Now, let's see the Marine attacks it first. Barrier is activated. Yeah, it has much, much more health. Okay, it's gonna get gunned up by the BC, but it's gonna have much, much more health than previously. So that's what that barrier is for. In some of the other examples, like with the Stalkers, you might have noticed that as well, that it absorbs incoming damage. So that makes it pretty darn tanky. 
Now, the final advantage of the Immortal is that it's got pretty good harassment potential. Now, what do I mean by this? Okay, we're going to have to clear the board, and I'm going to have to reset the terrain. Natural. Okay, it's going to take a little while to set up. Okay, let's get some gateways. Research warp gate, because of course you would. Go back to Terran, get five SCVs. Where are the SCVs? There they are. A couple of tanks. And. No, no. No, not, not you. Oh, that's why. Okay, good. Finally, we'll get a warp prism to Immortals. Perfect. Okay, so let's say you're trying to break this Terran base. The Terran has put siege tanks over here. So what... Now, attacking the siege tank directly is a bad idea. So what you can do is just load them up into the warp prism. And then what you can do is you can drop them off as your as part of your harassment strategy. And then warp in stuff. Yeah, so you can have a lot of potential here. And essentially if your immortals are ever having any real damage, you pick them up and you get out. Yep, so you can load up in a warp prism. By the way, SCVs are also... of other buildings are all armored. So these things kill buildings really, really quickly. Yep. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so that's... so those are the strengths of the Immortals. Now, what are the weaknesses? Well... Well, the first weakness an Immortal will have is getting overrun. So, how do you kill a tank? How do you kill a tank? Well, you can get another tank, and you can get other Immortals in order to deal with it. Or, you could rush it with infantry. Let's get those three Immortals that did so well against those Stalkers. And let's get the rough equivalent in Zealots. Now, see, here's the thing. Zealots are not armored units, so they they, only, they do not, or rather the Immortal does not get the extra damage out against it. So, <laughs> so if you actually rush it with infantry, you notice that the rough equivalent amount in Zealots completely shredded those Immortals. Now let's take this as Terran as well. Okay, rough equivalent. Okay, the Hunter Bears, they're taking, they're taking it, but notice that Immortals just don't kill Marines very fast. They're slower than Zealots, slower than a lot of things. Yep. Or, worse still, like, they punch through those Roaches, no problem. But against just 15 Zerg. Like, they don't kill Zerglings very quickly, that's the problem. Okay, maybe... Okay, so they took down 15. Let's up those numbers. Let's up it to 25. Again, the Immortals still cost a lot more. Yeah, in fact, in fact. You can even take the same number of workers, you see, that now, now the Immortals are all dying. Again, we go back, we notice that the Immortals cost way more than these links, so that's one way to deal with them. Now, the other way to get rid of a tank is via airstrike. The Immortals can't shoot up, they have no anti-air, not in StarCraft 2, not in the main game at least. So another way Zerg could deal with this, you see a bunch of Immortals, okay, Zerg gets a Spire, Zerg gets any amount of Mutalisk, Yeah, this is actually a real problem in PV... PVZ, where if Muters are not scouted, you get like a nice immortal army, and you just die to Muters. Our allies are being attacked. Like it's a Terran's case, if you're Terran. A good counter is the Liberator. 
We'll get to the liberated assault video. Didn't even make it halfway across. Now finally, if you're Protoss, yes, you could get the Void Ray, we'll get to that as well. But there's also another interesting thing you could do. So in the previous example, we had those eight um, Stalkers. Let's go for six and let's trade the other two out for Phoenixes. These flying things. So if we start and if we click attack and if we micro... Oh crap. Yeah, so this is something that actually happens in Protoss versus Protoss. If one player goes for Immortals, that technically counts as Stalkers, but if Stalkers have the relevant air support and a little bit of micro, this is going to happen. And the other player can't do anything against it. Now, the other problem about the Immortal, and this is something a bit more to do with their macro cycle. I'm just going to talk, I'm just going to talk here. Is that while they're not super expensive, they, I mean, they're, they're kind of expensive. 270 minutes, 100 gas is not quite an Archon. But while they're not super expensive, the real problem is the three units here. The Observer, the Warp Prism, and the Immortal. Which is, you need a while to, uh, to get this critical mass. Each Archon takes, or rather each Immortal, takes a full 39 seconds. And you can only make one at a time. So you will need to take a few minutes to, to create that mass of immortals. However, if the enemy gets a good engagement and kills all of them, those high-tech units, um, the enemy, be it Terran or, or Zerg, or just flood marines, flood links, push across and kind of kill you. <coughs> so the, the disadvantage here is that these are fundamentally irreplaceable losses, and you kind of have to look after these, these high-tech units. Okay, so those were some of their weaknesses. And now we're going to do something a bit new to talk about the uh, matchup specific. So in PVT, as seen earlier, yeah, so in PVT, as seen earlier, they're used to break the siege tank lines. If not, there's no real way a Protoss army can hit these tanks sieged up head on. In PvP, as again seen earlier, they used to take on Stalkers. And in PvZ, they used to take on, if the enemy goes for a more uh, Vote Ravager composition, maybe sometimes with uh, Lurkers behind that, this could be a good thing. Of course, the Immortals do a lot of damage to buildings, so it's good to just have them wrecking bases. Okay, so those are my matchup specific comments. Okay. So, in conclusion, so in conclusion, you know, Immortals are a key unit for any Protoss army. And as a result, they're part of that... They're part of that Protoss Death Ball. You know, immense pre precision firepower. But you do need support on their flanks and in disguise. They are valuable... And you need to treat them well, because not just because they're valuable warriors, but if you lose them, you will likely lose the game. It's happened plenty of times. Okay, so this is time for the outro. If you like this guide, please do like and subscribe. I will be trying to make as many videos of these as I can. Um, as well as some other SC2 content. If you have any feedback and comments, please uh, enter down below. And thanks for watching. <laughs> That's the Gundam star, by the way.